Hey guys, here today with another Shergorov knife. This one is the Russian Dr. Death Arctic version. Um, this is the third iteration of the collaboration with Tom Mayo, the Russian Dr. Death. And we've had um, two other iterations so far. One was a full titanium version with an S90V blade and set in flats. We had a second variation with a carbon fiber show side Van X 37 blade steel and stone wash finish, I believe. Now we have this brand new version um, with a lot of upgrades that we've seen in the cuts and division line, silver Alutex handle and a damas steel blade. So let's take a look at it. First, let's measure the weight. And I believe the weight on this one is around 90, 91 grams. Yeah, 90.6 grams. Um, it's approximately 3.1 ounces. The blade length is exactly the same as a 95 at um, 95 millimeters. That equates to around three and three fourths inches of cutting edge. We have a handle that's 120 millimeters. So including the back spacer protruding just a little bit over four and three fourths of an inch. And with that, we have an overall length of around, I wanna say 8.75 overall uh, for the overall length, or it says right here, 2.18 millimeters. Now when we put that up against an F95, you can see that they're pretty much in the same ballpark for, for size. So I can line this up with the pivot here. Um, let me point it this way would be better. There we go. You can see that the F95 does protrude a little bit in the pommel area past the Arctic. Um, so that is something to consider, but these knives are pretty much in the same size class. However, there are a couple things that makes the um, Russian Dr. Death feel a little bit lighter. One of those things is the 3.5 millimeter blade stock here, and also the 12 millimeter handle. Um, this equates to a knife that, even though it's just a millimeter or two less than an F95 um, in the hand, it feels very, very well done uh, and feels much slimmer, much more compact. So I do appreciate that about the knife. Now, moving on to uh, some of the specific features of the knife. Um, let's take a look at the blade first. Now, as you can see, this blade is the same profile that we saw in the earlier versions of the Russian Dr. Death and is uh, very heavily inspired by what we see on the original Mayo design. You have a very pointy profile, very aggressive looking, uh, with swedges in the exact same original spot as you would see on the original and the um, initial runs, or initial variations of the Russian Dr. Death. The blade steel is a damas steel blade in the Yorkman's Twist damas steel pattern. Um, you can see the jimping here on the blade is the flat type of sugar jimping. jimping. Um, this jimping is actually quite aggressive. I was a little bit worried about this, but after handling a couple of Russian Dr. Deaths, I've noticed that the jimping is, is quite functional. Um, it doesn't, it, it seems a little bit lower than what you see on a normal F95, but the ridges are, are quite pronounced. Or I would say the, um, the milling is, is quite sharp, which is great. Um, it makes for a profile that when you initially run your fingers over, uh, you're not really catching your fingers or anything, but when you really want to push down on it, then you'll start to feel the resistance of the jimping. It's a great job. Now, the blade is very well done. The etch on the broken twist comes out a lot better than what we see on some other damas steels, such as uh, Ager or even Vinland. So as you can see, the etching is very, very well defined. Not a lot of um, smudging as you would see again. The edge is very well done, very fine, just like you'd expect on a Shirogorov knife. Now, the only thing that I don't like about the blade is this exposed pivot hole. And I believe the reason why this was done, um, when Sergei was designing the knife, he wanted to really have the flipper tab line up 
with the protrusions on the blade. Now, if you take a look at the original Mayo design, you'll see that when the flipper is deployed, uh, you'll have the flipper tab rest somewhere around in this area. Now, when I believe they were doing the collaboration, Sergio wanted to have the knife, uh, have when the blade was in the deployed position, have the flipper tab match up with the protrusions on the handle. And what that results in, I believe is this, is this uh, detent hole coming out this far. Um, personally, I think it's a pretty bad idea having an exposed detent hole not only looks unattractive, but it also welcomes uh, having debris or other stuff uh, clogging that hole and perhaps causing an obstruction when the detent ball rides uh, towards the hole. But I can understand why uh, he want, Sergio wanted to have a flipper tab over here. It does look aesthetically very pleasing. Um, however, I think by just extending, extending the handle out you know, one or two millimeters, you could have hidden that hole as well. So I guess that was something to, kind of something to think about. Um, I believe that there could have been a way to design the knife without that exposed detent hole. Now moving on to the handle, you can see that there are a lot of new touches on this knife compared to the original Russian Doctor Death. Uh, a lot of those changes have occurred over the past couple years with the Custom Division line. Um, one of the most noticeable ones is the addition of the pivot collar right here, and also the faux custom division screw. As you can see on like every other custom division, the actual screw is on the lock side, but you have this nice indexed uh, pivot screw with a very nice chamfering here. Now a little bit more about the pivot collar. I thought this was just a normal titanium pivot collar and you know a polished machine finish. However, if you take a look closely, I don't know if I can get the right light, you can actually see that the pivot collar is done in a very heavy stone wash, polished stone wash. This is great. I think this goes very well with the whole Arctic thing of the knife. Um, kind of reminds me of like cracked glass or something like that. So very nice job there. Um, the pivot system, again, like the original and other custom divisions is a single row roller bearing system. And this one actually has steel uh, washer underlays on both sides of the knife. So not only on the Alutex side, but also on the um, titanium lock side as well. And the handle again is silver Alutex. Um, Alutex being, uh, you know, a similar similar uh, composite material to carbon fiber, but instead of using carbon fiber, you're using, um, I believe, glass fibers. Um, Moving on towards the back of the handle, you can see that the logos of the collaborators, both Tom Mayo and Sergei Shirogorov, are done on this titanium insert. Um, this titanium insert is also finished in that kind of heavy stone wash finish that the pivot collar has. And it's a really nice touch, actually. Um, when you take a look at the knife, your eyes are immediately drawn to the pommel area with that titanium inlay. So really nice uh, little piece right there. Um, you can see there's there's additional chamfering on the inlay, but the inlay itself is not contoured with a handle. That is one negative that uh, I would say would would be nice to have seen on the on the knife. As you can see, the handles are done in very gentle sloping 3D contour, but that inlay is completely flat. Now, I'm not sure if that was done uh, with the limitation in mind because of how the logos would look if the inlay was contoured. Um, personally, I think it's still nice with this flat, uh, you know, non-machine profiles. It kind of, you can see it, it definitely stands proud of the handle, but Personally, if it was me, it would have been nice to see it contoured with the handle and have it completely flush. Now, we can't overlook the mayo holes. I think that's one of the things that we that uh, Sergey really wanted to make sure was there when doing this collaboration. And I have to say, what a great choice of materials to go along with those mayo holes. Having a damaged steel blade means that you can immediately see the blade even when the handle is closed or even when the knife is closed. So having those mail holes there is a, is a really nice uh, complement to the damage steel blade, of course. Now moving on to the lock side. Um, again, another disappointment that I had with the knife is that the pivot collar was not continued on, the both, on both sides of the knife. Um, we've had a couple of knives 
you know, like the custom division Hati, which is a, you know, half composite side, half titanium lock side that have pivot colors on both sides. So I just thought it was a little bit uh, interesting to see why this knife didn't have it on both sides. Now, if I were to take a guess, perhaps maybe adding a pivot collar would have the machining run too close to the lock bar cutout. I'm not sure. Um, I really wish they were able to accommodate a uh, pivot collar on both sides of the knife, however. Um, moving on, you can see that the handle has the same silk milling texture, this very fine diagonal uh, milling done on the handle as the original Russian Dr. Death. Really great, subtle texture. Um, this is perhaps one of my favorite textures that Shirogorov does uh, on his knives. Um, it gives a really nice tactile feel while not being obtrusive. And of course, um, <clears throat> providing, that, providing that just extra visual flair. Um, moving on, you can see that custom division lock bar insert screw and also the new external lock bar cutout. Now we've seen this starting first on the Neon Zero, moving on to the F95 Antique, and now this being, I believe, the third knife with that external lock bar cut out. I was told that this is done for consistency. Um, personally, I like the look of the internal lock bar cut out as it doesn't disrupt the lines of the knife. But as you can see here, um, it's not just a normal, you know, um, <clears throat> straight slash uh, across the lock bar. It's, it's done in a stylized manner, which doesn't look completely horrible in my opinion. Um, of, some, of note, you can see that the mail holes here extend onto the lock bar. Now, if you take a look at the original Dr. Death, uh, Russian Dr. Death, you can see that the holes on the lock side are actually smaller than on the show side. With this new version of the Russian Dr. Death Arctic, um, we have both of the holes being the same size. That also means an enlarged hole in the clip here as well. So what this means is when the knife is deployed, uh, when taking a look on the show side, on the original Dr. Death, you could see the smaller holes on the lock side. But with the new version on the Arctic, you can see completely through the knife, which I think is good. I think there really was no reason to make the holes on the lock side smaller. Maybe perhaps um, Sergei originally didn't want to have the milling on the lock bar, but this is a really cool look actually. I do like that the holes kind of go through the entirety of the knife, even with a lock bar in the way. But as you can see, everything is very nicely chamfered. There's a, there's a wide, very generous chamfer um, on the holes, so you're not getting sharp edges or protrusions on the lock bar. So again, very well done there. Moving back, we have that 3D machine clip. Um, the clip has pretty much uh, stayed the same in terms of the shape uh, and its function um, besides the enlarged hole to match the rest of the holes on the lock side. Now, personally, I do have a problem with the clip tension. This is not, uh, this the Russian, Death, Russian Dr. Death Arctic is not the first knife I've seen with this problem. Um, I've handled quite a few Neon Zeros with just an extreme amount of clip tension. Um, pretty much have to be bending the clips back to get them to be a normal tension. I'm not sure if this is something that the workshop wants, but it makes it a little difficult to pocket the knife. Even if you're just wearing, you know, some heavy duty jeans that can really stand up to you shoving the clip in, these, these clips are getting very, very hard to work with. So something that I encourage you to, uh, there's, there's no harm in bending the clip a little bit. Titanium is quite springy. You'll still get a working clip. But again, when you're spending this much money on a knife, it'd be nice to have that done out of the factory. <clears throat> so moving on to the backspacer, you can see the backspacer design has not changed. Um, I believe since the original, we have that gear pattern here. We have a nice angular protrusion that allows you to tie a lanyard. Taking a look at the inside of the backspacer, like many other knives, you can see that there's a very generous generous groove in the backspacer to house the blade and to show off the blade centering, which again, like many other Shiro Grove knives, is dead on. Um, this groove actually extends through the entire back of the uh, entire inside of the backspacer right here. As you can see, so the blade has a place to comfortably sit inside the knife. Also worth noting is the extensive milling on the inside of the handles. Really great job here. 
just the amount of work on the inside of this knife, particularly with the mayo holes is incredible. Um, every time I take a look at the inside, I'm, I'm quite amazed. You can see even, even with an external lock bar cutout, we still have some internal milling to reduce the weight of the lock bar. So very nice. Um, oh, last thing of note, you can see here the single row roller bearing logo on the inside of the handles. <clears throat> so after going over the individual details of the knife, what do I think of the entire knife in general? Um, well, let's get the elephant out of the room. Anyone who has handled one of the original Dr. Thus probably has uh, something to say about the action of the knife. Now, it's not that it's not smooth. It has the same roller bearing pivot system as you know any other custom division knife. But a lot of problem had a lot of uh, people have had problems with the actual flipping action of the knife, and the reason for that actually is quite simple. Um, when we take a look at any of Sergei's other designs, we can see a flipper tab that is placed generally right above the pivot. This allows you to get enough force behind the the, pip, the flipper tab before it breaks. Um, some people refer to this as preloading. With the flipper tab so far behind the pivot, it's much harder to get the that same amount of um, force behind the flipper tab before the detent breaks. What that results in is a much weaker flipping action. <clears throat> now, I've experienced this myself with a couple of Russian Dr. Deaths. I think I've handled around three or four, and they've all pretty much have had weaker flips. I'm really glad to report that with the Arctic, I'm not seeing that issue as much. I haven't handled as many Arctics. I've only handled, um, I believe, three. But all of the ones that I've handled have had much better actions relative to the older original version. Now, they don't flip in quite the same way as an F95. So if you're expecting that, um, you will be disappointed. But coming from the original knives, they've done an excellent job, I think, with this inherent design limitation. Um, as you can see, mine breaks quite cleanly. Um, even if I were to do a light flip, it still flies out. Um, the flip is a little bit different. I think that this knife is something that has just a very slight learning curve, not quite as drastic as say like the Sigma or the Pero, but it is something that when you pick up on the first, uh, when you pick up for the first time, don't be discouraged if you, you know, can't get a satisfying flip the first time. I think after spending about, uh, you know, two or three minutes um, flipping it, you'll understand what you need to do to get to flip. And once you understand that, the knife will positively deploy no matter what. But of course, it's not like they just increase the blade tension or sorry, the lock bar tension. The, the knife still has a, a nice action on rollers. It's still quite smooth. Um, one thing you will note is that Damas steel blades or Damascus blades just aren't as smooth as their mono steel counterparts because you're having a detent ball roll on layers of steel. And you're gonna feel that uh, for quite a while until that, uh, that detent ball really wears uh, a positive detent track in the blade. So while the knife is smooth, you know, if you take a look or if you take a feel, if you have the knife and just, you know, rest your finger on the, on the lock bar while opening and closing the blade, you can definitely feel the layers of damaged steel which eventually will disappear over time. Um, sorry, Go ahead, trying to speak from a, from a you know, high level overview here and not talk about these individual details. Um, yeah, the, the knife overall I think is great. If you're a fan of the Tom Mayo design and a fan of uh, Sergei Shirogrov as well, this will be a great knife for you. Personally, I think it's the best iteration so far in the um, Russian Dr. Death lineup. But of course, you know, with all these nice new uh, I wouldn't say groundbreaking features. The insert is pretty cool, but everything else, you know, pivot colors, the matching holes, um, the upgraded detent, those are definitely quality of life upgrades to the knife, not, you know, huge, uh, huge groundbreaking features. And, you know, it sounds weird to talk about the, it sounds weird to talk about the, uh, the knife from kind of like a perspective of having these upgrades come out. But again, you know, with a knife with three different variations, uh, this being the actual second major iteration since the first two were pretty much just, you know, variations of each other. Um, it's kind of nice to compare the knife 
to that older version. I know a lot of people, again, you know, even the original was a very limited collaboration piece, so not a lot of people um, had the opportunity to handle one of the older ones. And I wanted to make this review kind of uh, beneficial for people of both perspectives, people who really wanted to see how much the knife has changed, were the detent issue, were the flipping issues addressed, uh, you know, stuff like that. I wanted that to be help this review to be helpful for those kind of people, but also at the same time, I also wanted to kind of bring the knife uh, and give an introduction to people who perhaps maybe just won the lottery for the first time and might be experiencing it as well. So to that, I really have to say that, yes, this is an improvement. I think this is the best variation. Um, the full titanium version on the original one with the S90V blade is pretty cool. But really, if I had to take one, probably would take this one because of the improved flipping mechanics and just, you know, things like this cool titanium insert, um, the pivot collar, even though it's not on both sides and having, you know, the same size holes. I think, you know, looking back at the older version, having the smaller holes looks kind of weird at this point. Now, are there flaws with the knife? Of course. You know, I wish that the inlay was contoured. I really wish that they had the pivot collar on both sides and this exposed detent hole, really no good. But overall, I think that this is a worthy upgrade. Again, keep on saying that. And you know, if you're coming to it for the first time, if you like the design, I think you'll enjoy the knife. The flipping action, while not the same as an F95, is definitely, uh, it's not something that uh, is lacking, I think, in any way. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the knife. I know it kind of ran a little bit long, but uh, again, really want to give that perspective uh, as a person coming from the original Dr. Death and also giving introdu introduction to just the overall features of the Russian Dr. Death design for anybody uh, who's getting the knife for the first time. So hope you have, hope you guys have a great day and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys again in the next knife video.